Now, with extremist attacks targeting Israelis and Jews, not just in Jerusalem, but all over the world, the Jewish community is increasingly taking it upon itself to thwart threats, particularly in the United States, where Jews are targeted more than any other group, despite making up less than 3% of the population. Joining me with more, Richard Priam, COO of the nonprofit Community Security Service. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Now, what can you tell me about the CSS? How does it work, and how did it start? First of all, thank you. Thank you for having me uh, on today. And, and, and to summarize in a nutshell what it is that CSS does is we train members of the community, of the Jewish community in the United States, to be involved with their own security, to identify suspicious indicators, to understand basic security procedures, to be involved with the security of their synagogues and their Jewish events. And to date, we have trained over 6,000 Jewish community members from coast to coast across the United States. And every week, our volunteers are helping protecting their institutions, their e events, keeping our community safe. So, you know, you, you mentioned, of course, that you're from coast to coast. Where specifically maybe does CSS operate and from where do you get your volunteers? So we, we get our volunteers from the synagogues and the Jewish institutions we protect mm -hmm. themselves. And, and the concept is quite simple. Nobody's going to care more than the safety of the people inside the synagogue when those people inside are your friends, your family, your children. So the volunteers in our network are, are Jewish community members involved in, in Jewish life, involved with their congregations. And uh, while we were on, originally founded in, in the East, on the East Coast in Manhattan, and we still have our largest presence in the tri-state area, we have since expanded to have a presence from Seattle to San Diego to Florida. And we continue to, to grow. We continue to expand for the very simple reason that the threat is increasing. The threat is not going mm -hmm. away, according to the FBI. 63% of all religiously motivated hate crimes targeted the Jewish community, as you mentioned, a very small minority in the United States. And we also see an increase in serious attacks, Jersey City, Muncie, Poway, uh, 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 Colleyville, you name it. So we have to take security seriously. And, and the one good thing, the, the silver lining in this situation is that the community is stepping up and taking those threats more seriously as well. What kind of, so what kind of training do you provide to, uh, to, to your volunteers and what kind of continuing support uh, does CSS provide? So obviously when we don't disclose all the operational procedures that we teach, but, but it, it, on the bottom line of it is this. Attacks in the diaspora don't happen in a vacuum, whether it is Europe or the United States, and even in some cases in Israel, uh, pre-attack indicators uh, are identifiable. People want to find out what should be their target, which synagogue should they uh, perpetrate their attack on, which place has the least amount of security. And when they're doing that kind of research, whether it's online or in person, that gives us people working in, in Jewish security an opportunity to, to identify those pre-attack indicators. So we can train volunteers, not only to create a posture around their institution, to have that deterrence that makes anyone who seeks to do harm to the community think twice about targeting that institution, but we can also train them to uh, identify proactively when somebody might be seeking harm and get that information to us, to law enforcement, to help make preventative arrests. And we've seen wow. more and more cases over the last two years where our volunteers have made that difference. Just last week, uh, uh, on Friday, through our uh, research department, we learned from our friends in the United Kingdom that there was somebody in the United States making threats against the Jewish community. We shared that with law enforcement, and a few hours later, someone uh, uh, on Penn Station, together with someone else, was arrested wow. with a firearm, a knife, and a swastika. Wow. That's incredible work. Richard, thank you so much for, for telling us a little bit about that, and thank you for the work that CSS is doing in the United States and abroad. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes.